Good job to you. Meanwhile, we're going to move on and let it go and pretend like it didn't happen. Hopefully, you can earn your way back from this deficit quickly. But it's not looking good at the moment because here you are still talking without I'm talking. So how on earth are you going to fix it when it's over here? And I hate to remind you all this because it is a long way off. But eventually, I am going to leave you and you've got to be productive on your own. Because I'm not going to be here to say Lloyd's great. So when I come right? back, I don't know what words you're saying because you're not letting me finish mine. Um, I don't know what your plan is then, but if your plan is to just goof off, you got a problem maybe because I'm not going to be here to save you. I am here now to still save your tail when you have these days. I am. But eventually I will not be here, and what will you do? You will just screw up your perfect grade. I'm so sorry, baby. You know, we have a point for that. that. Yes, you can go to zero. <laughs> Everybody was negative. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, meanwhile, what was I saying? I got distracted. Oh, yes. Yeah. I will not be here to save you. And that beautiful, beautiful grade you purposely took the street to get is now all of a sudden gone. And I cannot fix it, and I'm not going to come back and magically fix it. So stop messing up your own grades. Get it together. <sighs> Okay. So did you have a good day yesterday? Not really. I took forever at a doctor's office. Paul is going to the doctor and it's taking all day to do something that she's taking already. Yeah, this, this I enjoy your recording of, uh, of the education. Thank you. I appreciate that. You can have a check for that. Yes. I have no answer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, I, I'm with Tyler. I was trying to do what he was trying to do. Okay, number eight. Number eight. Yes, dear. Uh, grouping. Oh, he's trying to make life too complicated. Instead of doing grouping, what should I do? For what? Instead of using grouping on this one, there are four terms currently, but instead I should do what? The number eight. Say it, Jackie. Yes, combine those like terms. Get a point. So x squared plus 6x plus 8. When I factor that, what times what? <coughs> add, multiplies to 8, and I need something that adds to give me 6. So two numbers that add to 6 multiply to 8. Uh, they just pulled out an A. Hold on, I'll show you. Don't worry. Okay, what were you saying, ma'am? Oh, yeah, it's 4 and 2, because 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So it's x plus 4, x plus 2. And you get a point for that. Okay, you see me giving out 1,000 bajillion points. Why are you not trying to get more points? Okay, number 9, yes, dear. Number table 2. If we factor out a 3p cube, what would we be left with? You can have two points for that because you told me what to factor out and you told me what was remaining. And that one was a little more difficult. <laughs> Last but not least, I see number 10. What am I going to use on number 10? Um, he said at first there are four terms. I'm going to use grouping. There is not a GCS. And there are no, the way there were like terms on Jackie's that we could mine, there are no like terms that can combine. So we've got to group the first two together, the second two together. <coughs> Once I group, now what? What can I pull out of the first, first term? Ooh, think bigger. No, you're right. You win. I wanted it to be bigger, but it's not. 2x, so you're left with 5x minus y. What do you pull out of the second set? There's 7 yeah, Miss Compton can't do math today. You can get a point for that. It's 5x minus 7y. You write it in another color. 5x minus 7y. That's really ugly. Oh, well. And next, what do I take out? Uh, and you're left with 5x minus 7y. This is how I would have caught myself, I pray. And so my answer is 2x minus 3, 5x minus 7y. Are there any questions about this one? Again, I get you've had to factor for a bajillion years now, and you're going to have to keep doing it for whatever next math class it is you intend to take, unless you're, you're, this is your final math class, in which case, I'm so sorry. Deal with me and the others for now. Um, as for tomorrow, we're still trying to get caught back up on math workshops. So I passed out the one from, sadly, we're still not even on this week yet. So I passed out the one for the previous week. I want to go over. <laughs> I want to go over the first eight tomorrow. I want to do a lot of math workshops tomorrow, and, but but that's a good thing that could get you a ton of points. So the first eight, I just passed that out a few minutes ago. This one? Yeah. Okay. So the first eight of tomorrow, if Bailey's trying to get her group points, she'll go ahead and factor and have it ready to roll. Okay, let's go to your other cute little handout. So every day lately we've had a cute little handout to get us ready for this chapter. This chapter is not hard. We tend to overthink it. Hence the cute little handouts to help us not overthink our lives. For instance, yesterday's example with the tree diagram, the one that had all the examples of the different toppings, I hope you use that logic when you got to, like, I think it was number eight in your 3-1, and then a couple after that you could have solved using this tree diagram. If Tyler's just trying to count in his head, his life's about to get really confusing because later on in Chapter 3, we're going to get to mix scoops. So, like, you'll get a chocolate and a vanilla and another chocolate. Like, we're going to mix stuff. So now he's got to keep in his head, and it matters, like, first scoop chocolate, second scoop vanilla. Is that different from first scoop vanilla, second scoop chocolate? So 
it starts getting really complicated. If you don't have some sort of a system to list out your options, you are you are just trying to get in trouble. Whew. You're just trying to ask for more work than you need to do. Okay. If you skipped 3.2, that's fine. It is not complicated. But before we even do 3.2 or anything else in the book, I want to go over basically what this whole chapter is testing on. And it's a principle called the counting principle. Okay. So, really what was supposed to happen, but I didn't do it because I'm not an elementary school teacher, is I was supposed to make a cute little book and put the other two pages we've had inside our cute little book. And now today we're going to do the main parts of the book. It was, you know, the other cute little two leaves. I knew it was too much, so I didn't do it because that was too much. Too much. Okay, so tree diagrams and sample space diagrams, which, remember, the sample space diagrams reminded us of what that we just tested on. Yes, and you can have your point. You were first. It reminds us of truth tables. And they are great ways to find possible numbers of outcomes. But are they always useful? Um, think of a situation where a tree, tree diagram or a sample diagram may be too large or too difficult to create. Describe that situation below. Um, <clears throat> well, I might not want to make a tree diagram if we can have multiple scoops of different... flavors of ice cream. Again, eventually we're going to start doing like chocolate, chocolate, vanilla, chocolate, vanilla, chocolate. Those are my cones. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. And you have to keep track of all of these and making a diagram to list all this out, probably not the best idea. Probably going to want to draw some pictures or something else. <clears throat> or <clears throat> probably wishing there was a simpler way. Because you were like me, sadly. And that, if there's less math we could show, we would like to. So that's my example. I don't know if someone wants to come up with a different example. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Okay, flip inside your book. So, if you're trying to make your life easier, if there's an easier way besides using a tree diagram or a sample space, it is by using something called the counting principle. Now, the counting principle is a simpler way to find the number of possible outcomes. I'm praying that you realized it by the end of the 3.1 you have yours done, right? It's not going to hurt my feelings if I have to see your book. Okay, show me your 3-1. I'm going to show you where you already used the counting principle. Well, I hope you used it yesterday. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. So we had this column, this table, and you were like, oh, so... Every time I was doing number of scoops times number of flavors, so you said 2F, and then eventually you said S times F for scoops times flavors, because you realize the number of scoops times the number of flavors gave you your number of options. That's exactly what the counting principle is saying. So that's what I'm going to write on the next line. The counting principle says if you have M ways to make one choice, The way we had um, S scoops, so a certain number of scoops. If you have M ways to make one choice, N ways to make a second choice. Then there are M times N ways to make the two choices together, however you want to phrase that, the two choices together. 
So we had a limited number of scoops, a limited number of flavors, and eventually you realized it was scoops times flavors. So literally we're just multiplying. I hope you realize that after having to fill in like two or three tables that you were just multiplying. And if you didn't, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> so we're seriously just multiplying. And if you're making your life too complicated, I don't really know why. Okay, so that's the hardest thing we have to write today. It isn't even though I still see people writing. Oh, right, that's fine. I'll move it up to the top and let's talk about the next one. So let's say you have four different pairs of socks and six different pairs of sneakers. How many different combinations can you make with socks and sneakers? I hate doing that. Wouldn't it be like 24? It is. And how did you get 24? Yes, you did four for the socks, six for the sneakers. Four times six is 24, so you had 24 options. Okay, so then we go to number four. It says, at Carlo's Italian Restaurant, bless you. At Carlo's Italian Restaurant, there are six choices for appetizers, eight choices for entrees. How many different appetizer and entree choices are there? Because who said, you said it? Brandon, get a point. Because six times eight is 48. So there are 48 different meals. Eventually, we're going to spend some more time on that because... I just find that fascinating. So there's this place in Tuscaloosa called Five. I assume there were five other were in the earth. I just always reference back to Tuscaloosa. And at Five, seriously, that's their name. They have five appetizers, five drinks, and five entrees. They have everything they have comes in fives. I just think that's so weird. So you would just do like five times five times five. That's the reason why they call it five. Yeah, that's the reason why they call it five. It's not five dollars though. That's the most annoying part. Five hundred dollars. Yeah, it ends up being like that. You're like, but your name is five. Everything should be five. Kind of the way five below. Everything is five dollars or less. I don't know. Hey, Miss, Miss we didn't get any point for yes, you should have. Sorry. Okay, number five. What's the answer on number five? She has eleven different skirts and thirteen different tops. If she wears a different skirt and top to school each day, how many different outfits can she wear? <laughs> Thank you. And you get a point. So 11 times 13 is 143. So 143 different outfits. And what? yay, we finally get to one that has three different things. Kind of the way we're about to get to really complicated ice cream cones. So if you have two different types of donuts, two different types of icing, four different types of toppings. Yes, ma'am. And how many different, if each donut has one type of icing and one type of topping, and how many different donuts varieties are there? Well, then two times five times four equals 40 different donuts. So, you know that's how a lot of restaurants get away with saying they have a big variety in their menu is they change little things. Like, technically, by just having sprinkles, not sprinkles, you've now given two options. And then if there were already three types of donuts, now the sprinkles, not sprinkles with each type of donut, it's like, whoo, starts adding up. We have rolls and Okay, flip to the back. Is there a back? No. No, that's it? Oh, hot dog. Okay, so the counting principle seems pretty sing and easy, right? Like, who can't multiply? I'm telling you, you'll be able to do it today. You'll be able to do it on this worksheet, and then we'll go back to the textbook. And, again, you're not going to correlate the two, and you're going to try to make life way too hard, and it's really not. Okay, I passed out a worksheet. It says uh, fundamental counting principle, factorials, permutation, invo. Let's see. There are specific numbers I want you to work. Yes, there are specific numbers on this worksheet that I just had that I don't want you to work. I want you to do number one, number three, number four, number eight. 
And then you got to do the back. One, three, four, eight in the back. You do not have to do four now. Eventually it's coming. Two, five, and six. Although if you think they're really that difficult, they're not. So am I going to be mad at you for doing them? No. I'm just saying four now. It is okay if you skip two, five, and six. Okay. 